Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Wednesday. It is June 3rd. What if we told you that ladies, your purse and gentlemen, your keychain may about to become even more cluttered or even heavier, but there's a reason for it. Yeah, it's going to be so you grab your keys, you grab your phone, your wallet and possibly an ultra light device. That's right. Uh, researchers are saying the new portable handheld COVID-19 killing UV light device may quickly become a reality for all of us and be become very, very common, common rather, just like those other things we talked about. There are two main ways to clean and remove bacteria and viruses from a given surface, so chemicals and ultraviolet radiation exposure, so UV radiation between 200 and 300 nanometers. That's right. And they say right now, as of now, such devices would require expensive, bulky, mercury-containing gas discharge lamps, easier for me to say, with a very short battery life. But now a study is saying that they're going to be able to possibly make something more energy efficient, more portable, longer lasting, and environmentally friendly UV light emitting diodes. 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 Yeah, you, you had it. All right. Yeah. They can be. They're saying they can be developed. Right. And they found some some uh, new material that they're working with, and they were tested out in the lab, and it's already showing some promise. So uh, we need devices that can be mass produced. They can be cheaper, easy to use, and that's when it becomes common household, everyday use for us, everyday carry kind of items for us. Oh my gosh, I can just imagine because my keychain already has you know the um, sanitizer on it. Right. And then I have like okay. Do I have my wipes? Do I have my mask? Do you have your ultraviolet light device? Hopefully it just be a little keychain. If they could just put it on the keychain like the hand sanitizer. One day, one day. It's going to be something <laughs> we could just order right off of Amazon. Let's take a look at your rundown. Thousands of people defined curfews from coast to coast, but the vast majority of protests were peaceful. Still, we saw tensions boiling over. This scene played out in New York City, where police with batons confronted reporters on the streets. Now, last night, it was a very different situation. We have Sky 12 video from around 11 last night when there were people out here protesting after the curfew. Texas Governor Greg Abbott says he will not be asking President Trump for the U.S. military's help in dealing with protests across the Lone Star State. Abbott says Texans can take care of Texans. New concerns about so-called super spreaders after a study from the New York Times revealed 80 percent of coronavirus cases have been traced back to social gatherings. The mayor's nearly 20 minute speech focused heavily on the COVID-19 pandemic. Nirenberg said the city is ready for a second wave. He spoke about the city council's upcoming vote on a $191 million recovery and resiliency plan. Republicans are now looking for a new state to host their convention this summer to avoid coronavirus restrictions in Charlotte. President Trump and the RNC want a full crowd to be allowed with no face masks. Presidential candidate Joe Biden has won the Democratic presidential primary in the District of Columbia. Police scanner apps are surging in popularity after days of rioting across the United States. Some scanner apps also let protesters listen to live police radio feeds. The developer of 5.0 Radio Police Scanner says the app has had more than half a million active users tune in just since Sunday. Here in New York City, someone dressed up as Spider-Man climbed the Manhattan Bridge as protesters faced off with police. Dairy farmers in Wisconsin will hold the world's largest online cheese party. Tomorrow is National Cheese Day. The group plans to market by offering people an opportunity to meet Wisconsin cheesemakers online. I want a cheese party. I know. Sounds fun, right? We can do that. Well, can you do that virtually? Because you need to taste no, you need the, the cheese. Exactly. I'm just going to really? watch it and just be like, I want everything that I can't. That's one of those things that you ask somebody, if you had, if you were stuck on a deserted island, what's something that you, you couldn't live without? Some people say cheeseburgers, some people say... Wine. Well, well there's that too. With cheese. With cheese. <laughs> it's a good mix, it's a good mix. Let's go outside with live cam. We've had clouds all morning long. As a matter of fact, earlier Mike was uh, talking about some reduced visibilities and fog out there, Justin. Yeah, the, the fog is lifted, but we still have some cloud cover there. It's going to hang around for a little while longer. Then the sun comes out. We see a couple showers this afternoon. Uh, we're kind of used to this pattern by now, but uh, the rain chances are really starting to fall off. Temperatures right now 77 in San Antonio, 72 Kerrville, 72 in Rock Springs. Look at the next couple days. we got a 20% chance of rain today, but after that, it gets hot. 
Uh, mostly sunny, 92 on Thursday, 94 on Friday. And after that, uh, we'll go even hotter. We've got some triple digits in the seven day forecast. And we'll show that to you here in just a few minutes. But let's look at the uh, visible satellite picture here. You can see all the clouds are trying to scatter out a little bit. And we've got a couple showers down there along I-37 south of Pleasanton. Those are working north. Uh, pollen count, mold still dropping. It's at 2,250, but it is also still in the high category. And the forecast for today, 20% chance of rain. We'll be up around 90 degrees. It may feel a little bit warmer than that with all this humidity around. Uh, we'll have the latest on some of those hot temperatures and Tropical Storm Crystal Ball coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Transcode right now, 1604 at Tradesman, no problems for Taren Paramidal. We still have a vehicle on the right shoulder out there in that part of town. And developing news this morning, San Antonio police are on a mission to find out more about the death of a man in a west side neighborhood. People in the area called them around six after finding the man's body in the middle of the street. Katrina Weber live where that investigation is ongoing. That's Henry Street near North Elmendorf. Uh, what do we know about how this man died so far, Katrina? The police told me it looks like he was shot. What they don't know is if he was shot here on this dead end street where they found him or if perhaps he was shot somewhere else and then brought here. Now, uh, police are just clearing out everything. They just took down the tape just a few minutes ago, but they had turned this dead end street into a crime scene. The police roped off the area shortly after six this morning. Initially, they were answering a call about a sick or injured person, but it wasn't long before it turned into a homicide investigation. Police say the man had blood on his head from a gunshot wound. They believe he was in his 40s. I spoke with one neighbor who told me that she got home very late last night. She says she did notice a car that seemed out of place, but she never saw the man's body, nor did she hear any gunshots. We saw detectives going door to door, uh, knocking on doors and looking for surveillance video of this area. They did admit to me, though, that uh, right now they have very little to go on as far as what happened. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you so much. Also developing this morning, San Antonio police investigating why a woman crashed into a pole on the south side. It happened around 7 this morning in the 8500 block of Somerset Road. Rescue crews had to use the jaws of life to get the woman out of the car, but police say she was talking and seemed to be okay despite her injuries. She was taken to the hospital for treatment. Now the crash knocked out power in that area and at last check CPS energy crews were working to restore it. A Bear County Sheriff's deputy and his wife are behind bars this morning after an incident on the south side. San Antonio police say BCSO deputy Luis Lopez was arrested for discharging a gun in a heavily populated area. Officers responded to the 1800 block of West Mallee Boulevard around 3 this morning. They found about 10 shell casings and say Lopez was not cooperating and appeared to be intoxicated. Police tell us his wife Valerie Cantu Lopez was also arrested for interfering with a public servant. Officials tell us she wouldn't listen to officers' instructions to go inside as they were trying to take her husband into custody. And we've just learned that at least seven, seven more people have been arrested following protests in the Alamo City last night. Right now, we're still waiting for all of their mug shots, but here is what we know. The suspects are facing a variety of charges, including rioting, criminal mischief, criminal tres trespassing, and evading arrest. Police tell us all seven suspects live within San Antonio city limits. This comes after another night of protests downtown and confrontations with officers in Alamo Plaza. San Antonio police tweeted out they were attacked with glass bottles while trying to disperse crowds, leading to officers using projectiles like rubber and wooden balls on the crowd. Some members of the media were also hit with projectiles. A reporter tweeting a question to the mayor asking if he was OK with this. He responded, no, I'm not. Nirenberg says he is seeking more information into why the projectiles were used. We'll continue to track that story here at home as protests over the death of George Floyd continue across the country, including here in San Antonio. City leaders have announced Alamo Plaza will be closed every night this week. The move's an attempt to minimize the possibility of further damage. The plaza will close every night at 830. The San Antonio Police Department will have an increased presence around the plaza and downtown to prevent any potential disturbances. Alamo Plaza will then reopen every morning at 6. The closures last until Sunday morning and could be extended if city leaders deem that necessary.
Well, turning now to your morning headlines, NASA doing more than launching rockets. They are helping with the COVID-19 pandemic and more incriminating video for police this time in Florida. We have also great video of a rescue, a young family saved from a raging river. But that's not the only family rescued. Good morning, David Sears. Firefighters busy the last couple of days rescuing Very. folks, doing some great work. We've got that for you. Show it to you in just a second. But first, American Ingenuity at its best. NASA and Fitbit have come up with FDA-approved ventilators. This is the second design NASA has come up with. Once again, they can do more than just put a man or woman on the moon. NASA Vital uses an internal compressor. It is designed to last three to four months. By the way, VITAL stands for Ventilator Intervention Technology Accessible Locally. The Fitbit Flow is designed as one that is inexpensive and easy to use. It is intended to be used by clinicians when a commercial ventilator isn't available. This is cell phone video of a Sarasota, Florida police officer that had his knee in the back of a suspect. Two other officers were all three are trying to attempt to make this arrest. This happening on May 18th, but the video just posted by the suspect's mom, the suspect Patrick Carroll says he was moving around so he could breathe because he suffers from asthma and scoliosis. The police say Carroll was trying to resist. The police department also says there was no complaint filed and they just found out about it when they were tagged with the video on Facebook. The chief says they are not trained to use a knee in someone's back. They don't authorize it or stand behind it and obviously the police chief says they have some work to do building up community relationships. We are bound and determined to do everything we can to build, rebuild and repair the relationships that were damaged in reference to what's going on in our community right now as it relates to this particular video. The officer on administrative leave at this point. This is an SUV stuck at a raging river in Utah inside a mom and four of her children. They were returning from a trip to the lake. Mom reached down to grab a water bottle from under the brake pedal. The next thing you knew, she was in the river. Water rising all around her and her kids. Rachel Clark had the presence of mind to get two of the kids, the four and six year olds, into their life jackets while they waited for help. Bystanders, police, fire all showed up. Then the firefighters pulled off the incredible rescue using their ladder truck. I thought to myself, I'm going to die before I let my kids die. So this might be it for me, but it's not going to be it for them. There's nothing I can do or say to tell them how thankful I am that I still have my kids and I'm still here. Only one child suffered minor injuries. Incredible. Great work by the firefighters once again. And our make you smile during tough times video of the day. Those are firefighters looking down a storm drain. Yeah, and then you see them holding that makeshift bag with a stick in the bag, the little ducklings. This is happening in Wisconsin. Somehow they went down the drain, but the little guys were rescued. All 10 got back to mom. She's probably a little upset. Johnny, why did you let your brothers and sisters down in that drain? <laughs> Johnny's going, Mom, I thought they could swim. She told the ducklings. <laughs> yeah, we've seen some instances like this lately. Uh, firefighters rescuing puppies, kittens, and now ducklings. 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 Yep. Get all your ducks in a row. Mm -hmm. They probably are now. They are now. Lined up. <laughs> They are. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. Right now, 9, 11, 77 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. Zoom is one of the few companies that's benefited from the pandemic. Baker Machado has a look at that and other tech and business headlines from Cheddar later in our newscast. A family escaping a war-torn country in Africa and ends up here in San Antonio. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. In today's great graduate segment, I'm going to introduce you to Eric, whose mission is now to help his community. Welcome back. It is 915. It's a story of a dangerous 8,000 mile journey from a torn country in Africa that ends here in San Antonio's west side. Eric Kamanzi and his family started in the Democratic Republic of Congo and now Eric is a KIPP University Prep high school graduate headed to college. Max Massey brings us the story of this great graduate. I'm refugees from uh, Congo to Tanzania. I come here in uh, 2010 in San Antonio. This is Eric Kamanzi's mother. She led her family to this living room and she led her family to a better life. Congo, we left there because of the Rwanda and Congo fighting. We left there because of a genocide. The Kamanzi story is that of strength, perseverance, and overcoming the seemingly impossible. My mom's a, like the person who means the most to me in this world, like obviously, but like 
just what she's done by herself as a single parent is like just out of this world crazy. At home, Eric and his family still speak Swahili. And when he is out in the community, whether it's on the basketball court or in the classroom, he is an inspiration and a mentor. So he has been paired um, since the time he was a freshman with students who have really struggled at our school um, because we are so confident in his ability to, again, be strong for students who are struggling. Eric is a leader here at KIPP and in his community. Next year, he is set to go to Texas Southern. He wants to study psychology and he just wants to help people. Other people uh, helped us and I would like to give that back and help other people, you know, be like, help them get to where they want to be. I think I might want to do like social work, like, like I said, helping people out. And Eric is not alone in his journey. His mom earned her GED here in America and she wants to keep going. I want to continue my education because I, I, I like to help uh, to help people. Just to think about what they've gone through to get here um, and then to see how incredible all of them are uh, is just truly remarkable and I, a testament to their mom. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Uh, congratulations to the Kamanzi family doing some great things and a bright, bright future ahead. Eric, congratulations. Congratu I, love, I love all of our great graduate stories. They keep getting better. God. Let's go to Justin now and check on our forecast. We made it to midweek mm -hmm. and we did have some rain in the area here and there yesterday. A little bit, a few downpours. Mm -hmm. You know, around here it feels like it's feast or famine, right? We've had a right. pretty good stretch here of some rain. Now I think we're going to go into a pretty good stretch of some dry weather. Uh, and temperatures are also going to heat up. Let's take a look at some of the rainfall totals from yesterday. Look, they, they weren't huge, but every little bit counts at this point. Uh, we got about a hundredth of an inch at the airport. 31 hundredths of an inch there in Sutherland Springs, about half an inch in Seguin. That was one of the bigger totals. Uh, Bronick Lake down there, close to an inch. Leon Valley, uh, about three tenths or 36 hundredths of an inch. So it was spotty. Not everybody got rain yesterday, but if you did get a downpour, it was nice to see. Of course, it made it very humid. And we may see a couple more downpours today, but I think it's going to be really relegated to the southeast, uh, southeast of San Antonio. We've got a couple showers out there this morning. And you see all the cloud cover. Clouds are trying to break up some. And we should see plenty of sun this afternoon, which will push those temperatures up close to 90. Mostly cloudy here in San Antonio, 77 degrees. Look at that dew point, 71. That makes it feel so much warmer out there. And east southeasterly winds at about 3 miles per hour. Temperatures 79, New Braunfels 75, Canyon Lake 73, Comfort 74 right now in Tarpley. We've got 75, Carrizo Springs and 78 right now in Catula. Dew points today, they're still not going to come down much. Now, I think in the coming days, we'll start to see some potentially lower dew points, but not today. Dew points right around 70 degrees, so that may produce a heat index a little bit later uh, this afternoon. Keep that in mind. Okay, here's the latest update on Tropical Storm Crystal Ball, and uh, right now, uh, it has made landfall. We're hearing that it is uh, moving into Mexico for now, but uh, it looks like it will reemerge out into the Gulf of Mexico and eventually move north. Winds are at 60 miles per hour, and uh, the latest track takes this, well, it sort of swirls it around a little bit, but then takes it north, and then so by Sunday, we're talking about 60 mile per hour winds. Hurricane Center doesn't think this is going to strengthen a whole lot, which is good news, uh, but it will push up towards, it looks like Louisiana, but keep in mind, uh, this whole cone is, it could go anywhere within this cone. So we're talking anywhere from uh, Alabama all the way to Houston. We are not within that cone. So uh, I'd say South Texas is going to stay on the dry set of things. That's not to say we couldn't see some clouds thrown in our direction or maybe a little bit of moisture, but I think at this point we're going to prepare for dry conditions and hot conditions. Generally on the backside of these storms, you can get some pretty hot temperatures because you have sinking air. So high pressure is going to start to build in. That pretty much takes our rain chances away. This model does still show a few coastal showers Thursday, Friday. It's possible, but I don't think we see anything here in San Antonio. As uh, we get into Saturday, our high kind of splits, and then uh, the, the tropical storm kind of works up in between those two. But uh, again, we'll be on the backside of things where it will be hot and likely dry. Forecast for today up around 90, 20% chance of a shower, generally south and east of San Antonio. 92 tomorrow, 94 Friday, 95 Saturday. Notice we just stepped these temperatures up. And yes, that is some triple digits showing up on Tuesday. Looks like it could be one of our warmest days, guys. I don't like that. 101. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the latest on Cristobal. Still ahead on GMSA 9, several music events put on hold yesterday in observance of Blackout Tuesday. Many artists are back at it again today. We have a lineup of what's live streaming next.
924 popular artists taking to social media to stream concerts and performances online amid the coronavirus pandemic. CNN's Rick Damagella has more with what's live streaming this week. The DMB drive-in is open. The Dave Matthews Band's weekly concert streams are spotlighting different charities. This week's stream is from a 1999 show in East Rutherford, New Jersey, and supports the Nature Conservancy. The concert kicks off Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern at dmbdrivein.com. I'm in between. Country singer and American Idol Season 10 winner Scotty McCreary will be performing for Tampa Bay, Florida radio station 99.5 QYK, but you don't have to be in Tampa to hear it. Tune into the station's website or listen via the Alexa app Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern. There is a world elsewhere. England's National Theater will present a limited streaming engagement of Tom Hiddleston's performance in Shakespeare's Coriolanus. The curtain rises Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern on National Theater's official YouTube page, running through June 11th. Streaming in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Well, there's still a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. Yeah, photos or posts on Facebook that you'd rather not have other people see. Facebook has a solution for you, a new feature that could let you delete old posts in mass in your tech and business briefing from Cheddar. An American flag dating back to World War II has been returned to the city of Reno, Nevada, after it was stolen during protests over the weekend. David is back with details on that and more good news. A civil rights investigation now open in the actions of the Minneapolis Police Department at the death of George Floyd, seen as Daryl Forges live with the latest after the break. And as we head out the break, a quick check of the roads on Transkai. That's 35 and Loop 410. Traffic looks pretty smooth. Welcome back. It is 930. It was another night of protests, curfews and arrests in cities across the country last night. Seeing as Daryl Ford just joins us live from Minneapolis with the very latest. Daryl. Yeah, Mark and Sarah, good morning to the both of you. This is where it all started here, the protests here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. But looking around, things have changed drastically. Business owners as well as people in the community are doing their part to clean up and rebuild. But also look behind me. There's a food, food distribution center here at this church here in the area. Now, protesters are continuing, but for the most part here and all across the country, it's been quite peaceful. For an eighth day, people took to the streets in cities across the U.S. In Seattle, protesters stayed late into the night and brought umbrellas to a protest to try to block crowd control chemicals. In Los Angeles, hundreds were arrested in an act of civil disobedience, but it followed a day of mostly peaceful marches throughout the city. Mayor Eric Garcetti met with protesters outside City Hall and acknowledged that work needs to be done on race relations, but sees hope in the calls for justice. This is a moment of opportunity and of hope and of change. This is how you do it in Chicago. In Chicago, people gather peacefully outside Wrigley Field for what a witness called a block party with protesters and police all coming together. And in New York, thousands marched throughout the streets, but not all confrontations ended peacefully. There were a number of arrests in New York for violating curfew. And in Atlanta, the National Guard and police used tear gas to disperse crowds. And back out live here as food is being distributed to people here uh, at this church. You also have to remember not only are the businesses around here closed because of what's been happening because of the protests, but also you can't forget we're still in a pandemic at this point. Can't forget about that. Uh, but also when it comes to the situation here, there are several memorials lined up for George Floyd for the next few days. The first one is in Minneapolis tomorrow. Live in Minneapolis, Minnesota, I'm Daryl Forges. Back to you. Now, Daryl, a civil rights investigation has been opened into the actions of the Minneapolis Police Department. What can you tell us about that? 
Yes, sir. When it comes to that investigation, the governor announced they're launching a civil rights investigation into the Minneapolis the Police Department to determine whether or not in the past 10 years have they done any systemic discrimination against people of color. They're going to be digging deep into that. And people around are saying and urging for not only justice for George Floyd, but also transparency within the law enforcement. All right, seeing as Daryl Ford just live from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Daryl, thank you very much. Talk to you soon. Back here at home. Let's go outside with live cam. See how things are looking out there at 932 on your Wednesday morning. So it looks a little better than this morning, not as hazy. Sun's trying to come out. Yeah, a little less hazy. We had some fog earlier. Most of that has gone away. Uh, we're going to start uh, this segment with a look at KSAC Connect. Mark, this is for you, man. Uh, some fishes down there. Uh, <laughs> some and pretty okay. good size largemouth bass. I mean, a bunch of them, too. That's impressive, right? Yeah, I'd heard rumors that Choke Canyon was producing quite a few big catches, and this just proves it because there's one, two. Well, he's got two in his right hand. Yeah. And at least two, and three in the left. Wow. Is, is that because of all the rain we've been getting? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I, I, guess, I suppose it's possible. Well, the water looks uh, somewhat stained to me, you know, with some sediment and stuff like that. I don't know what's creating such great conditions out at Choke right now, but I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. <laughs> it's time to head down <laughs> there. there. You go. Yeah, yeah it is the reservoir that is producing. It is time. Uh, looking at the satellite picture right now, you see that we've got uh, scattered clouds out there. Mostly cloudy skies here in San Antonio. These will scatter out a little bit more, so probably partly cloudy conditions later today. We had a couple showers down there along uh, I-37. Those are really starting to dissipate. There's about a 20% chance of rain today. Your temperatures are warm. 77 at the airport, 77 Randolph, and it is very humid. 90, your high temperature, 20% chance of rain through about 5 o'clock. And uh, we'll see rain chances fall off after this. Guys, coming up here in just a bit, we've got another junior meteorologist for you. We'll have that in just a few minutes. Quick look at Transkai. Thank you, Justin. Let's take a look. We have construction out there. 10, guess where? Bernie Stage Road in the Leon Springs area. Traffic looking great there at 410 and Broadway. And I-35 at Ben's Engelman. Pretty smooth. Let's check in with our friends at Cheddar. Hello, everyone. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Warner Music Group now delaying their pricing of their IPO to Wednesday. Out of respect for Blackout Tuesday, when it does list, the music company plans to raise close to $2 billion through a sale of 70 million shares priced anywhere between 23 and 26 bucks. That would value the company at close to $13 billion. Now, Warner Music will list on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol WMG. Meanwhile, Zoom reporting a huge beat on earnings and revenue in their last earnings report. They benefited widely from the work at home environment. Zoom's revenue who jumped a whopping 169% year over year. The company reporting they now have more than 265,000 customers, each with over 10 employees. That marks a 354% increase year over year. Now, Zoom also reveals they have 769 customers who pay more than $100,000 for the service. And if you have old photos or posts on your Facebook profile and you'd rather not have people see it, well, Facebook now has a solution for that. The social media giant launched a new feature It'll make it a lot easier to delete old posts in mass. The feature is called Manage Activity, and it enables users to delete posts in bulk from a certain time range or even with specific people in them. The feature will debut on Facebook's mobile app first. And that's your Chatter Business to Tech Update. I'm Baker Pachado, coming to you from New York City. Of course, pandemic, the uh, trend is contactless transactions. This takes it to a whole and meteor level. Me oh, I see what you did there. So the owner of a butcher shop and restaurant in Rochester, New York, uh, has a meaty new vending machine that he says has been a hit with customers who can now purchase their steaks and chops with minimal person to person contact and a sectioned off vestibule vestibule at the front of a shop. He says uh, the response has been unbelievable. This is Kevin McCann, owner and head butcher at McCann's Local Meats up there in Rochester, New York. On Saturday, I was cutting and restocking the machine four or five times. Look at that. Instead of sandwiches, it's meat. A hundred percent, I would do that. I would too. 
He says he can't take credit for the idea, though. He said his friend and mentor Josh Appleston, who operates Appleston Meats in Hudson Valley, New York, has actually been utilized refrigerated, utilizing rather refrigerated meat vending machines for years. He said, you know what, it seemed like a no-brainer to implement it at this time as an added service to what we already do. The other good point I like about this, too, he said, hey, in regards to the pandemic, a lot of our customers here uh, work in the hospital system, a lot of crazy schedules, not much time. I like to give them the option to be able to come here, pick up a steak, a couple different sides, be able to sort of have a complete healthy meal without having to resort. Wait, he has to sides fast. in there, too? Well, I don't see them in here. These are all choice cuts of meat, it looks like. Authorizing twenty nine ninety nine, uh, but uh, <laughs> maybe onto the side there he's got all the the different sides. But he's making it where you basically it's a one stop shop almost. Maybe you can walk in almost any time of day and pick up. I love that your you know of, of eating because you you're it's like fast food, but mm -hmm. I mean good good expensive food. But, but good. Uh, the uh, the main the lead line on the story we found meet the twenty four hour meat machine. Nice. 938, 77 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. A group of fishermen in Hawaii had a lucky day at sea and decided to use their catch to feed their local health care workers. David Sears is back with a look at that and more good news. That's next. You know, in the middle of all the bad, there are some good stories today. Our David Sears joins us again to share something positive and uplifting. David, tell me something good. You know, you can always find it. And sometimes it's just right there in front of you, oh. right? Yeah. We are going to start with an historic flag story. A lot of times you'll see the American flag being burned during protests here and around the world. Not this time. This is a saving flag story. Like in a lot of cities, there have been protests and violence that happened in Reno Saturday night. Vandals broke into City Hall, and it turned out after things calmed down, it was discovered that a very historic flag was missing. A flag from World War II that flew on the USS Reno was donated to the city of Reno back in 1946. A content producer at a TV station wrote a story on the missing flag on Monday. Then yesterday, guess what showed up at the TV station? A box addressed to the reporter and inside, the flag. No kidding. Oh. Yeah, best they can tell, a man in his 20s or 30s got the flag before it could be destroyed or maybe had a change of heart. There was a note left with the flag. The flag was returned to the vice mayor. This is a symbol of the goodness of human beings. It's a symbol of the resilience that our community has. So thank you so much yeah. for it. Yeah, the vice mayor said it's going to be displayed again at some point, but it will be in a safer case. Well, how about that? That was a yeah. quick turn of events. Like that. So mm -hmm. but let's hope that the person went in to save the flag and didn't want to do something with it and decided to later against it. Let's hope they went in and saved that thing. Uh, right. Okay. Let's get fishy again. Oh, here you go. This one's for you. This is right up your alley. Fishermen in Hawaii, look at that. Oh. Caught two yellowfin tuna. They weighed in at a combined 220 pounds. How long would it take you to get that in, Mark? Yellowfin tuna right there. He's, at, still, he's uh, still reeling it in. Three to four hours. <laughs> three to four hours. Probably. Wow. All right. So they sent the fish over to a seafood distributor. The fish were cleaned, cooked, and then prepared to do 300 poke bowls. Then they were donated. The fishermen had the bowls sent to the Honolulu Straub Medical Center and the Queens Medical Center for the health care workers to enjoy. Those fishermen were inspired by another fisherman who just passed away at the age of 104. See, fish is good for you. He donated fish that he caught to local folks that well, needed some food. You know, so uh, that's, that's an expensive fish. And our, and our tuna, like large tunas, they're super expensive. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially on the, the Japanese market. I mean, they're an absolute delicacy. Not that they're not here, but I mean, people pay top dollar. So that's actually Japan. a large monetary donation mm -hmm. that they made. It's great. Yeah. So and I'm sure the hospital workers appreciate it. A little tuna for life. That would be a workout bringing those fish in. That's so. Mm hmm. All right, you've got your neighborhood drive-by parades for graduates. This one a little different. The seniors at Summit High School in Fontana, California, got a drive-up graduation in pit row of the Fontana Speedway. They got a diploma, a picture, a great memory, all while wearing their mask. And then wouldn't you know it, the juniors, they're telling the principal, hey, we want the same thing next year for our graduation. Forget this walking across the stage someplace. <laughs> Let's get our diplomas in pit row of the local race car. Demanding a new tradition. Look, and look at the cars. There's some. There's some sweet looking race cars. I there. would do my research and, and just try to reach out to whoever had the coolest car. Like find a person that I knew that had the coolest car because it's like then it's like who's rolling up? What are you rolling up in? You know? Yeah. You know, and we've said it before. 
that it, as tough as it is, but to be a member of the class of 2020, it's, it's one that'll never happen again, probably, we hope, not in our lifetime anyway. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, you have something, I mean, as bad as it is that you can't walk across the stage like normally, but these ideas people are coming up with, I mean, you've got stories to tell your grandkids one day. Oh, no doubt. I, I graduated in 2020. And I got to get my diploma at a race car track. That's right. Or drive by or something. In the history you know? books, yeah, for sure. That's pretty yep. cool. So there you go. Thank you very much, David. And all, we are happy. Thank such, you for the good I'm news. That's good normally your department. I know. But I'm glad David was able to take over. Everyone's today. sharing good news. Well, it's time for another junior meteorologist this week. Yes. And today it's Marley. She's nine and she loves weather. Take a listen. trash cans because it's going to be windy today because ours flew away an hour ago so you better hold on to your trash cans and buy your mob an umbrella because it's going to be really rainy this week back at you oh <laughs> she's the cutest thing can we use that one to all right justin Back at you. Back, Back at, at you. I like it. Yeah. She's like, like a mini it. Katie Blake with the, the trash can. Yeah, you got to watch out for those trash cans. They will blow away when it gets windy. That's <laughs> yes, great will. information. Um, oh, great job. Marley, we, we truly appreciate it. And uh, remember, you can submit your uh, junior meteorologist videos. You can do that on our KSAC Kids, part of our website. We love to see some more. If you ever had senior meteorologists, let us know, because I know a bunch of people that are old and could probably. I actually better. would love that. <laughs> If my David, I'm not looking at you. Like, well, I'm, I'm not looking at you. David. He was not in my line of sight when I was saying that. Yes, he was. <laughs> oh man. Okay. All right. Let's go outside. And he's out. Back at you, Justin. <laughs> Back at you. Uh, mostly cloudy skies right now. We've got temperatures at 77 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 71. And we've got light winds out there. Uh, quite a bit of cloud cover here around San Antonio right now. So mostly cloudy skies, but these are going to continue to break up even a little bit more. We'll see some sun this afternoon, pushing those temperatures up close to 90. 73 right now, Bernie State, 78 Honda. We're up to 81 already in New Braunfels. And 79 Austin, 73 Kerrville. Everybody's in the 70s at this point, but we'll see some 80s here fairly soon. And the heat index, well, it's already there. It's only 948 this morning, but we've already got a heat index and these numbers will grow too. So it feels like 80 in Hondo, it feels like 79 right now in San Antonio. Uh, with humidity staying high, we'll see that through the day. As far as rainfall goes, we've had some nice downpours last couple of days. These, uh, this pattern is starting to come to an end. So we've got a couple out there in Anascosa County. These are working north, but these are very light, very quick moving, and this is all we've got. So I think that the, we'll see a couple showers today, but they'll be few and far between. And after today, rain chances really start to go away. Okay, let's talk about Tropical Storm Cristobal. Uh, right now, it's down there in the, in the Gulf of Mexico, Bay of Campeche, and it's starting to move onshore into Mexico for now. So that may weaken it just a little bit. Winter at 60 miles per hour, but I think it will reemerge, and then it is forecast to move north and uh, move towards the Gulf Coast. So. The latest from the Hurricane Center takes us uh, almost due north, and by Sunday we're talking about 60 mile per hour winds. So there's not a lot of intensification here. That's some good news. And then the, the latest uh, track, and we got to look at this whole cone here. We can't just look at the track because we're so far out. There's still going to be some uncertainty here, but we're talking anywhere from Houston over to uh, Alabama. So there's a large area that could be impacted by this tropical storm, but you'll notice that South Texas is really. Uh, outside of this. So I think for us, it's going to be dry weather and it's going to be heat. That's going to be the effect we get from this tropical storm because a lot of times you get sinking air on the back side of it. And that is uh, what we're going to be looking at. And so temperatures will likely get very warm by the end of the weekend. Here's what the upper level winds look like. We've got high pressure starting to build in. So that's why things sort of quiet down a little bit. And then this sort of splits as this tropical storm moves north. Uh, but the rain may go as far as Houston, right? And then, then we're just going to be in the sun and likely clear and hot. Uh, again, that's subject to change, but that's what the latest forecast looks like at this point. 90 degrees, the high temperature today, 20% chance of some isolated showers and storms. Southeasterly winds, 5 to 10 miles per hour. 
We'll go 92 tomorrow, 94 on Friday, and then we really ramp it up as we get into the weekend. 95 Saturday. I did add in a few extra clouds Sunday into Monday to account for any clouds that get thrown in our direction from the tropical storm, but right now we're not expecting any rain. And then by Tuesday, we could be looking at our first triple digits of the year, at least here in San Antonio. Uh, a lot of places in South Texas could be really warm by early next week. All right, we'll be right back. Stay with us. Right now on KZAT.com, do you enjoy fishing? Well, this Saturday is free fishing day in Texas. Every year on the first Saturday in June, anyone can fish recreationally across the state without the need of a license. The Texas Parks and Wildlife Department says this is in hopes that more people will try fishing. Normally, a fishing license is required for adults. The money from the license fees supports the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department's conservation efforts. For more information about Fishing Day, you can visit our web website right now, ksat.com. If you're still looking for what to do during the summer while being safe from the pandemic, we have some ideas for you. On ksat.com, you can find a list of things that you can still do. For example, camping or going to swimming. Some places Texas has to offer, like, I don't know if it's Krause Springs or Krause's Springs. You pick. Uh, or if you still don't feel comfortable enough to enjoy the outdoors, there's also virtual camps offered without the need to leave the comfort of your home. And a patient over the ch over at Children's Hospital of San Antonio is celebrating today after ending three years of treatment for leukemia. The young patient send off included years of joy from family and hospital staff as the police escorted him to ring the bell at the entrance of the hospital. You don't want to miss this special celebration that's on KSAT.com under the local news tab. Real quick, another check of Trans Guide or actually we're going to go to, to our not so junior meteorologist Justin Horn. <laughs> 20% chance of some showers today up around 90 degrees. Temperatures ramp up from there. Looks like we will have very few effects other than heat from the tropical storm. Um, a shoemaker in Romania, Transylvania to be specifically, has come up with a size 75 shoe to keep people apart. Social distancing. Here they are. Well, I mean, <laughs> I can't talk now. Um, so Sarah can't either. <laughs> It looks like. Okay, so the idea is to get the long nose leather shoes to keep people apart. Uh, he said he went to the market to buy seedlings for my garden. There weren't many people there, and they kept getting closer and closer. So he just thought, make bigger shoes. Right. So he adapted the long footwear from a model he made for actors, said he had so far received five orders for the social distancing shoes. Takes him a couple of days. They're about $115 a pair. Huh, some big shoes to fill. What size do you wear, Justin? Uh, 